We're back. Or else. Or else. I stare out the window as we roll down the dusty streets of Echo. Honestly, it doesn't look much worse off than how I left it. The roads might be a little worse, but I assume that's because they haven't done any maintenance since winter. I'm regretting not letting him know we're coming, you know? You'll be lucky if he even gets his ass out of bed. We'll call him then. And what if he doesn't answer? Yeah, I wonder, I wonder what will happen if he doesn't answer. Yeah, I like, wonder if like, we have like we've gone through this before, prior maybe. experience with this day being a disaster every time. It's been, it's actually gotten worse every time, somehow. Yeah, because the first time we just made him upset. And Jenna yeah. yelled at him, and it was uncomfortable, and he just wanted to not do this. Then we broke into his house and didn't find him. Yeah. Then we broke into his house again and didn't find him, and also it was genuinely a missing person situation. Yes, yes. Which was its own twist, because we were like, oh, here comes the part where he's missing, and we're like, oh, dang, where'd Carl go? Well, I guess that one's kind of good, because we broke into his house... And there was, like, a reason, as opposed to the one before we we're, broke we're, into his house, <laughs> just because. Like. We're vindicated. We're the people who noticed and told his parents that he was missing, so we're the good guys and not the people that just broke into his house. Like, that's the part that's that, that part of the narrative is immediately forgotten in that timeline because well, of how important it is that he's actually genuinely missing. It's like when you do something bad, but, like, in, at the end of the day, it makes things, like, yeah. better. And it's like no one blames you anymore for doing <laughs> a, an original bad thing. They're like, oh, it's okay. It's all all's well that ends well. In it's reality, like a, I'd be like... Why do you guys break into my house in the first place? Yeah. It's like, oh, don't worry about it. Shh, don't worry. We were just really worried about you. Don't worry about it. It's like we a, had a feeling. We all like, had a feeling. I may have stolen from you, but I did find out you have cancer. So, you know, early diagnosis. <laughs> yeah, so just forget that I'm a kleptomaniac. <laughs> forget how I found out. I don't know how those two things would happen together, but <laughs> I was trying to think of just like a life-saving you, thing. You break into someone's house and you rummage their garbage because you're a stalker. Oh and my God. you find um, a positive pregnancy test, but it's a man. And so you find out they have oh testicular cancer. God. And then you diagnose it for them. Is that a thing? Yeah. Does testicular cancer make you pass pre yes. pregnancy tests as yes, a man? Yes, it does. Yep. <laughs> Never in fact, there's, there's a, the reason I bring that up is because there's, there's a whole Reddit where like the, somebody found out they had cancer because everyone on Reddit was like, oh, go get checked because he made like a joke. He made like one of those stupid memes <laughs> with like all the squiggly people. Like the old school memes, like the, you know, but the like, rage faces. Yeah, kind of like yeah that that era. And there's like, oh, oh I goodness. must I must be pregnant. And everyone in the comments is like, go to the doctors, go so to the doctors. And he had he had memes. a he had like a, a tumor on his on his balls, and he got taken oh. off, so he was fine. And he was like, thanks, Reddit. <laughs> the internet saved a person. And it did good. And for now once. everyone's incredibly aware of this man's balls. Yeah, I mean, good, good. <laughs> yeah, everyone out there. That's what awareness is, dummy. I could save a life right now. Oh god, a rage face. This is so back. That's like... Dude, you mad, it, bro? It, talking oh, about no. advice animals. <laughs> I hate... Oh, no. I hated all this. <laughs> I hated all this. And the penguin. That penguin that's like... Walking and with the background that says the something. The unpopular opinion penguin? Is that who it was? I don't know. I don't know what was going I'm on. I remember... Every version, every unpopular opinion meme is actually just relatively popular opinions, and they're they get really old really fast. Because if they're unpopular, then nobody actually shares them or likes them. And you got the wolf that was like showing its teeth. The yeah, the like the the murder wolf or whatever, the rage wolf. Yeah, I wasn't fully on the internet yet back then. I just remember being like, "What the fuck are people doing? No, I don't the, get any of this." There was some really dumb stuff. There was a whole YouTube channel called Anna Meme, and all they did was take the advice animals and just have a voice actor read out the lines while the like the character in the middle is like actually animated and the background's probably like spinning or something like the weird backdrop that was just a pick color uh but like that's such that's that, that's such incredibly like lean like there's such so little content there so instead they would just sit there and just read like 20 in a row like that that's the whole video it's so, yeah. just them reading velociraptor messages over and over again None of that was funny. It's still not funny. I thought things started getting funny when they started getting like really trippy and weird. I liked the deep fried memes because because I'm I'm because a they just became incomprehensible. Person. Yeah, because they're just I like the ones that are like so out there that they're just like, uh, like oh you've been beaned and it's like a picture of a bean. Like I don't I liked all the weird esoteric ones that made no sense. I don't know how we got here. 
I don't know how we got we here, got here in from life. breaking into it. Oh, breaking in to then accidentally do a good thing led to that guy's balls led to old internet. <laughs> okay. Everyone check your balls. <laughs> Leo doesn't say anything. Instead, focusing back on the road, TJ fills the silence after a while. Well, I don't think it's too weird. It's just we're hanging out again. Nothing wrong with that. He's so sweet. Sure, but making it about Carl is just weird. Maybe if his birthday was, like, next week, two weeks tops. Flynn just mad because he wanted to be the one to celebrate Carl's birthday with him alone. Yes, all the time. He's like, I remembered your birthday and yeah. no one else. Oh, snowflake. <laughs> oh, hush, Flynn. It'll just be like we're hanging out. You acting weird about it isn't, isn't going to help anything. <laughs> I feel bad because I, no, <laughs> I just said that for no reason. There's no context. I, I should probably just show you. <laughs> Speaking of modern memes. Alright, let's just do this. I'll just voice act it. Let's go. Oh, I'm sorry, Snowflake. Did I offend you? Do you want a band-aid? Do you want a hug? Do you want a kiss? I will kiss you. I'll, I will do it. Right on the mouth. Come here, Snowflake. That's it. Your lips are so, are so soft, <laughs> oh, Snowflake. No. Mm. Ew, uh, no. Snowflake. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. That's why I randomly was like, so, like, thinking about just dumb, mad, fronting Flynn. I'm like, this fucking meme is all I can think about. I mean, it is kind of, it's kind of cute, but I don't, I don't know. I just... <laughs> Hearing you voice it in, like, in your, um, like, Patrick... Warburton voice like kind of threw me off a little bit. <laughs> that's that's drifted so much. What was the original? Uh, uh, I can't even. <laughs> what's, a, what's a line from Phoenix Wright? I was gonna say gum, Gumshoe is yeah. my original exposure to you doing oh, that I, voice. There was a a different voice originally that like. <laughs> well, I think he was more doofy. Like yeah, no. But, yeah, I don't know. They're not know. supposed to be. Uh, Gumshoe and Amicus and Flynn are not supposed to be the same voice. They're just coming from the same human. And humans can only make so many voices like, unless you're, like, an amazing yeah. genius. They're both me, like, over... over. Uh, I'm over-enunciating with a deeper voice, but I'm not redoing the Amicus voice in my brash, dickhead Flynn voice. <laughs> no, <laughs> It's I, not the same I thing. I can tell the difference, but it's in the category of, yeah. like, your... Pa what I call your Patrick, Patrick Warburton type voices. Yeah. It's in that box. I, I, the other one I have to reset, but like, hey, Peter. There we go. <laughs> there we go. I've got more. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I'm out of practice. Hey, Peter, I've got more evidence for Edgeworth. <laughs> Good improv. <laughs> Not to like blow everyone's minds right now or like bring back memories, but I always pick, when I think of his voice, I don't think of him from Family Guy. I don't think of him from like as even as Crunk. I think of the video they show you before you go on California soaring what? in California uh, Adventures in Disneyland. You wait in line, and the guy who explains to you how to put your seatbelt on is Patrick Warburton wearing a pilot <laughs> suit, and he's like, "Buckle up your seatbelts and like secure your little ones," and like he like he it's him giving you the video while you're waiting in line. And that is what I think of when I think of Patrick Warburton. That that specifically, and that is hmm. the first thing I think of. We gotta get on, we gotta get on task. I know We're, someone out I, there. I'm a though. disaster today. The car starts slowing down, and I snap out of my daydreaming to look up, knowing that we definitely aren't at Carl's house yet. Oh, is this the ping? That's when I see a round canine figure standing further up the side of the road. She's standing in the dirt that separates the road and the field in front of a broken and rusted barbed wire fence. I think that's Janice. I look over at Leo and he seems concerned. His brows furrowed as he carefully steers the car right up next to the coyote. I can see why. She's crouched over, elbows on her knees, staring at the ground. Uh, roll down your window, Chase. I do as he says, struggling a little with the old crank handle. The hell's she doing out here? We come to a stop next to the coyote, kicking up some dust. 
Uh, I don't know. Uh, hey. Leo leans over me and smiles out at Janice, who's still looking at the ground. Everything all... Leo's voice cuts off in a weird, choking sound. I look at him, confused, then look back at the win out the window and I can't help myself but gasp. It was hard to tell from the angle, and all the dust kicked up from the van, but now I can see that Janice has her pants down around her thighs. I can also see everything else. I sit back quickly and avert my eyes, looking out the windshield instead. What the fuck? Oh my god. Leo, keep going. Jenna whispers it, her voice strained. Oh, uh, sorry, uh... Leo stops talking and I chance a glance out the window again. Janice is looking at us now, and she's smiling. It's a weird smile because it isn't touching her eyes. It's unnerving. That's just your normal diner smile she's experienced. Like like when you're when you Hi, hate your, you hate your cheery, customers, your customer cheery service. Customer smile. service. I totally feel like this all day. Ha <laughs> I was, I, I'm trying to do it, but I don't think I can What's it gonna be, honey? <laughs> You're so interesting. I'm glad you guys are here. Everyone else here is so boring. <laughs> Thank you for talking to me for five minutes after I took your order. Uh huh. You have an I'm an not busy. You have an anecdote about eggs? Great. Wow. They grow up so fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, show me pictures of your grandkids? Oh, great. Mm -hmm. It's not like I have toast burning, but okay. Mm -hmm. Leo stares back. Leo. Go! I hiss out the side of my mouth, staring out the windshield again. He seems reluctant to, though, looking concerned. Uh, Janice, uh, do you need some help? His tone is one you might use on a toddler or a crazy person. I don't hear her say anything except maybe a grunt. Leo bravely keeps trying, though. Well, we can give you a ride. Leo stops talking in time for me to hear a pattering sound. It's a sound I recognize well from back when I would take a piss on the dirt roads of Echo when no one was around. I don't think you needed a, I don't think you needed a nostalgic memory of the long to long time ago where you ever ever peed somewhere besides a bathroom. I don't think that's like I feel like most people have done that within the last year at some point. It just eventually comes up. You, you just, you're not nostalgic <laughs> about it? Like, you're not like, oh, yeah, you're not I remember like, that oh, time. Oh, yes. I remember the last time that happened when I was five years old, back in the, in the Echo years. I, like, I peed out in the snow once. It's like, you're going that to college fun. now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the van lurches forward, then resumes a smoother acceleration back onto the empty road. Holy shit. What the fuck was that? Uh, I don't... Leo's frowning, looking as confused as I've ever seen him. Should I... Should I go back? No! I look back and see TJ covering his face. Maybe. She could be having some kind of psychotic episode. Or maybe she just had to take a piss. I don't think so. Did you see the way she looked at me? I mean, I think if I was caught doing that, I would be like, I'm sorry. Let's keep driving. I would say something. I wouldn't just, like, not say anything. I'd be like, oh, sorry, guys. Look the other way. I'm just doing a normal thing. I didn't think anyone was going to be out here. Sorry. It's very awkward because, like, it's just, a th it's just a thing that doesn't take that long. And you would, like, look both ways first. Yes. You well, don't tend to get caught doing this because you, you're either hiding behind, like... Like, people hide behind their car door. Or in the case where she's just out in the public on her own... You would look both ways first and be like, is any car coming? Well, and look at this. Look how flat this terrain is. You're not like in a forest where yeah. like somebody could sneak up on you. It's like you are. You would know like a mile away if a car was headed <laughs> towards you. Yeah. Uh, she was probably just on something. Isn't everyone? Uh, no, she doesn't do stuff like that. Well, maybe she does. You never know with people. Especially people that witnessed a horrible, gory death earlier in their life and... I just have that repeating in their mind forever, probably. They don't know that, though. Yeah, but sh background. We're growing. We're revisiting old scenes and having new contexts. We're the omnipresent. Janice's hypothetical drug problem. <laughs> Who knows? 
Yeah, I mean, honestly, that might, I think it could make a lot of people turn to drugs, to be honest. That was, that's a pretty horrific event. <laughs> you yeah. need therapy after that one. Again, Leo doesn't say anything, and neither does anyone else. I glance back at TJ, who's sitting in the very back seat with Jenna. He's got his ears down, looking into his lap where he's fidgeting with his hands. I know he's probably thinking the same thing I am, which is that we're supposed to help Janice with her spring cleaning or whatever. Oh yeah, I forgot he signed us up for that oh. that bullshit. Well, we're out of it now. Are we? we don't, well, I mean... Why would we be out of it now? Because of this awkward event. It's time to never, to never call again. Well, I mean, I think she should understand why we wouldn't show up now. Like, <laughs> I, would, I mean, she doesn't... I don't think she knows what's happening right now. I wanted them to show up because I want to... Oh, man. I wonder how much, I do wonder how much they pre-planned what every route would be. Like if they sketched out what every route would be before they were writing other stuff necessarily. Because in the Leo route, we go to Janice's, and that's the specific one where we get confronted by Clint, and no, we get confronted by Duke and Brian. You mean at the at the diner? Yeah. Yeah. And we run into the kitchen, and there's seemingly a dead person cut up by Janice in there. And now the timeline's going to be that we potentially are hanging out with Janice that day. So. Well, that makes it does make me hope that we do get to go. Because I actually kind of like Janice and I want to know a little bit more about Janice. I and feel like, I like, I feel like this might be the Janice horror route, essentially. Where we, we get to finally see what the fuck was going on with Janice that's been kind of hinted at multiple times. I mean, that would be totally fine. But like I said, as a person who might want an excuse to not go do spring cleaning for someone watching them pull their pants down and, and seeing their junk as they piss on the side of the road yeah. might be a pretty good reason to just be like rain check like we'll do this another time when you're when you're doing a little bit better sweetheart like i'm just trying to think logistically like with a woman it would be relatively hard to spot anything at a glance well that's what i thought was funny when they said and everything else i'm like you'd really have to get a good angle on that yeah like how are you how how are you seeing all that well because like, she's gonna see the pubis we know for a fact that her hands are on her knees and she's like crouching and it's like wouldn't her, like, underwear get in the way? Because it's, like, probably, like, on her thighs. Man, I can't tell you how fucking difficult that... I've done... I've obviously done yeah. this. <laughs> like, there's a whole... You have to really be, like, okay, you gotta look down and be like, nothing's in the way, right? Yeah. And if you don't pee fast enough, it there's a... Like, it, dri it dribbles on your thighs. And it's like, well... <laughs> oh, no. Sorry, everyone out there who doesn't want to know the logistics of that, but... Sorry to everyone who's never tried to pour a coffee before and does, never doesn't know how water works. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, it, you all can figure it out, but I have, oh. I have a funnel now, so I'm good. <laughs> Keith's mom gave me a funnel for Christmas <laughs> for me to pee out of, and I'm bringing it on our road trip just in case. I forgot about that. I'm so stoked about it. I almost brought it out just to try it for fun. <laughs> My, my mom is so weird. I love her. <laughs> we had a whole me and her had a conversation about it. That's it's why so, she bought it for me. Oh, it's because you already had talked about it before. Yeah, okay. we, were, we were both complaining about how funny, hard it is to pee outside a as a girl. Because we had to go pee in the woods when we went to. It's just, to, it's just how like, she is. Like camping. she got me road flares and she got you a, a, a pee funnel, a prosthetic peer. <laughs> I was so excited <laughs> for the differently able. I, bri gender. I bragged about it for like to a bunch of people who were not as enthusiastic as me. <laughs> I want, but yeah, but yeah, like because the um, there's like certain things that we use to as there's certain things we use in this game as like measuring the sticks is like as we get through the the week each time, and one of them is definitely the birthday party that's always ha happening. Mm -hmm. But like part of that is that there's this ritual where you always encounter Janice or you hear about the people who encounter Janice in the case of Carl's route because we weren't with them, but it's so reliable that I'm like. This isn't just like a rant. Like, it's one thing to... They could potentially just be doing it just to reestablish that this is the same timeline each time. Like, that that branches and it's like that would be what happens because nothing's changed yet or whatever. Although, plenty has changed before then because we do something different before that every time. But the way that they keep insisting on, on setting it up again and again, I kept... I started, I, was, I was starting to think, like, is something going to go on with Janice? Like, is Janice going to be a bigger element in this narrative that we're, like, just sort of nesting for later? I mean... So I'm wondering if this is the Janice route. It's possible. I, I took it as, like, a very immediate and obvious instance of there being a very distinct problem. Like, there's something creepy to me about it because there is no... 
normal woman who would do that in that way. Yeah. And so to me, it just it's just like a very clear and in like unmistakable sign that there is a distinct problem with it's that like, individual or with everyone it's like, like all those town. scenes at the beginning of Shaun of the dead Ye- that are establishing that something's going wrong and the joke is that they're not noticing yeah or like, like every that, single slasher movie that's like in a in the boonies or in the woods or whatever there's always like that gas station with the creepy guy that they get like in the like uh, lots of kids going down there lately. Nah, not coming out. <laughs> That's why I like Dale and Tucker because they do the exact same thing. They got the gas station just like, oh, yeah. like what y'all doing around here, kids? Like you know, yeah. obviously like foreboding <laughs> signal. All these college kids are killing themselves on our property. <laughs> it's an incredible. It's an incredible to help movie. Them. That movie's astonishing. It's it's really great if you like horror movies. I really recommend it. And if you or if you like Alan Tudyk, I don't know who's that. He's the the blonde guy in that movie of the two uh, the hillbillies. He's from Firefly and a bunch of other shows and a lot of voice acting and and Star Wars and some other places. You don't watch new Star Wars, which is mostly for the best. He's in the one of the worst Star Wars movies all of all, Rogue One. Yeah, I did see that one. Unfortunately, oh, I really did not like. He that. was the funny robot. Oh, I forgot about that already. Yeah, I blocked of, all that out from my fun, brain. All the funny robots have really good actors. Like how in uh, a potentially even worse movie, Solo, the uh, the 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 funny robot in that one's played by Fleabag. Aww. <laughs> like that's an astonishing person to have cast as the funny robot in your movie. <laughs> I want to ask him about it, but the dead silent van is making me feel like now isn't the best time. I fucking told you. I love how many scenes just open with Flynn yelling. <laughs> with his open shirt. It's a good punch. It's fine. Leo stabs the doorbell again. Frustration etched across his face. Can you please keep the cursing down just a little bit? I can't help but notice TJ wince at every F-bomb. He's been keeping his distance from Flynn, always standing on the opposite side of our little group. I shift the bag I'm carrying around in my hands, trying to look through the fr- the frosted glass on the sides of the door. Maybe he's getting high? He should still be able to hear. But he might have answered the door if you were getting high. I'm just saying, like, especially depending on the year and if it's legal where you are. Yeah. I wouldn't answer the fucking door. I mean, maybe he just doesn't want to? I mean, I don't know if this town has a police, st- uh, police force. They really... I, th- I thought every town had a police force, but maybe not. I think this town just has Peyton. Oh, that's, that's kind of like, scary. That's like where all the cops come, are supposedly coming from, but they can't get past the infinite loop. But you call a poli- you call like a police officer and it takes them like forty minutes to get to you. That's just how what I imagine that being like. Like it's it's full on like the it's like the Silent Hill movie when you see the perspectives of being in the town and outside the town and the, the when the people in outside the town even arrive, they're still not there. Like, that's because it's a different town, like a different version of the town. You just can't reach them, period. You're just completely screwed. TJ holds up his phone. Uh, He's not answering his phone, either. Leo knocks on the door, hard, his bicep bulging. Nice touch. Nice throwing that in there. (laughs) Well, I guess breaking the door might get us inside. Leo stands back, paws at his waist as he takes a deep breath. He's determined. And I guess he should be considering... I guess he should be considering he set all this up. Surprise birthday parties are unethical, and you are a bad friend if you do them. Yeah, better... Yeah. <laughs> don't you fucking... Don't none of y'all do that to me. I'll, I'll cry. We should have just told him to meet us at the diner or something. Do they lock their windows? Most people do. What? Leo growls. It's not like we're breaking in. You're literally doing that. That is exactly what you're doing, by definition. TJ's ear is pinned back, a frown on his face. The wolf puts a paw on his forehead, closing his eyes. Sorry, but I think he's just asleep, and it shouldn't be too hard to just get in there and wake him up. I look over at the side of the house, and I see a window well. I point at it. What about that? Too small. I could probably fit. She hops off the front porch and crouches down next to the window, pushing at it. Wait, there's a security sticker here. 
Well, you gotta arm it first, and Carl's such a lazy ass. I know he didn't. Flynn probably knows the code. <laughs> it's his birthday. Oh my god. Besides, <laughs> if we get it, uh, if we set it off, we can just run. It's not like they'll show up anytime soon. Jenna hesitates, then pushes at the window again, but doesn't budge. Locked. Let's try the one above it. That's too high. I'll boost you up. The, pictured here, the final time these two characters ever cooperated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think this is going a little too far. Leo ignores him and stands next to the window before making a, a platform for Jenna's foot with his paws. Steadying herself with her paws against the wall of the house, Leo easily lifts Jenna and she manages to grab the ledge. Fucking hell, this is so fucking stupid. Flynn mutters next to me, but I ignore him. Jenna pushes against the window and it glides open easily. Yes, now I'm going to boost you all the way up. Hold on, with your feet. <laughs> Careful. Like there's some kind of cheerleading duo, Leo shoves Jenna all the way up with one paw, and she disappears through the window. I could see them being a cheerleading duo. <laughs> that sounds. I mean, that, look, that looks about right. Back in the, the football years, you have like the one, the one dude who yeah. can lift all the girls up and throw them around. Yeah. Her bush tail is the last thing we see until she pokes her head back through. Kitchen. I fell in the sink. Great. Now unlock the door. She disappears again, and we make our way back to the front door. Leo, you're fucking crazy. If you don't shut your fucking mouth, Flynn, I'll kick you right in your vag. Sound good? Jesus, calm your- Leo turns on him, one foot in front of the other. Flynn shuts up. I love silencing my friends with threats of violence. TJ's eyes are wide, even though he's staring down at the steps. I want to put my arm around him. Finally, we hear the door rattling and it opens. Called his name, but he didn't answer. Well, he's gotta be here. It's not like he can go anywhere. Or would want to. Carl's house is as massive and immaculate as I can remember. It is a mansion, after all. Well, maybe less immaculate than I remember. There are a few wrappers and pizza boxes on the marble counter. That doesn't make it less immaculate, it just makes it, like, slightly messy. The architecture's still beautiful and it's still big. It's well, still like expensive. Well, I think, doesn't immaculate specifically mean, like, orderly and clean or something? You know, I'm not entirely sure. So if sure. you've made a mess, I think that means not, you're not very immaculate. I thought immaculate... You know, I'm gonna have to look that up later. Because <laughs> I thought it just meant, like, impressive or something. Siri, what's immaculate? I assume that's because Carl's parents aren't here to, to tell him not to be a slob. You think they tell him not to be a slob? I bet they just clean up after him. Oh, I mean, that's kind of how Carl's are formed. <laughs> <laughs> Flynn immediately heads up the stairs. Yo, Carl! I set the bag down on the table, and TJ sets the cake there, too. I look over at him. You alright? I'm good. Why? Just asking. So... I rub the back of my head, trying to think of how to bring it up. What is it? Uh, Janice. Oh, yeah. TJ mirrors my pose, rubbing the back of his own head. I'm actually really worried about her. I mean, should we still go? Yes, yes, go, go, go. TJ looks at me, surprised. Of course, especially now. We need to make sure she's okay. Ah, oh, you might be right there, Keith. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe we should. I'm just saying, in real life, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I would never speak to this person again. No, I would just be like... I would flee the country. Maybe like, a, I'd be like, maybe later, I'd be like, I would send her a text, be like, hey girl, you okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, not trying to embarrass you. I actually don't feel like we need to do that at all, considering she's probably really, really high. Exa dude, exactly. I was going to suggest that we could at least postpone the visit until tomorrow so she had time to come down. But TJ's shock at my suggestion has me holding my tongue for now. Because he's too pure and he's got to do the right thing no matter what. To me, the right thing would be like, just not embarrassing her by just waiting a little <laughs> bit. 
Uh, Chase, you check in the back. TJ, downstairs. Leo barks at us before hustling past towards the hallway. We both look at each other before I shrug and head back for the door. Head for the back door. I stare out the glass window on the door for a while, wondering why Carl would even be out there. The old playset with the swings is gone, and so is the treehouse that used to be in one of the two trees. The branch near the base of the tree is what we used to use as a step. Uh, that we that we used to use as a step has been cut away too. Carl and I used to play it up in that tree house all the time when he was younger, when we were younger, nailing it. I open the door and step out onto the concrete steps. I feel a pang of sadness seeing it gone. I had a lot of memories up there. I can remember the day we started building it. I mean, Carl's dad had built the base of it, but left the rest up to us. <laughs> he just gave up. He was like, fuck this. <laughs> he made, like, the kids just hammered it together. And Here's a, a platform or whatever. Go away. In Drake and Josh fashion, they, they accidentally steal themselves inside and forget <laughs> to make a door. Duke, the old weasel, had a pair of random junk, a pile of random junk in the, his backyard, and he gave us permission to take from it as long as we cleaned up it, cleaned it all up. It sounds like back when Duke was nicer. I just think about, like, hereditary and, like... Uh, oh, man, that's a treehouse. And maybe... Was it Bly Manor? I feel like Blind Manor might have had it too, where they just, they just had like, f oh no, not not Blind Manor. I think that was, I think it was Haunting of Hill House, like that and Hereditary just have like, fuck you, huge tree houses. Like what the hell, what what in the world? This is a genuine property. It has more living space than I do. Well, I've seen ones <laughs> where you can rent them out, and I'm like, where, <laughs> how, how much? Yeah. What is the get, structural integrity of this? Like. I'd be worried about the tree part, but these people have more fucking square footage than I do. Like, what the hell? <laughs> I mean, I was actually looking to some... Like, they have those, like, prefabbed sheds that people are living in now because the housing economy is so trash. But I was looking yeah. at it, and, it's, and some of them are, like, pretty nice. And it's like, you just insulate it, and you have a gigantic place to live. Soon we'll all just live in shipping containers. On Appa a giant apparently, stack. Okay, so I actually looked into that, too. That's not... <laughs> that actually is not as feasible. Um, because the cooling's too bad or something. Yeah, you, you it takes a lot to get it to retain temperature. Like you, it's it's not very um, compared, like there's, there's a lot of logistical and problems. Insula insulation to it. and everything. Yeah, in fact, the the people that make the really immaculate sheds now know that people are using them for houses, so they're at have they have add on options for mm. like things like insulation. But it's like apparently there's no ventilation in like the like there's a lot of problems with using um, shipping containers as housing. Mm hmm. Because somebody did make one into an Airbnb, and I saw like a genuine review of what it was like to be there, and there's like all these problems with it. Just everybody hates it. Yeah, but let's just buy it. We should all just chip in for a big lot, and we could all buy fancy, fancy sheds that are like twenty grand each because how fancy they are, <laughs> and we can all just live in them in one lot together and have a little. We'll have a little culty co-op. A culty, a culty co-op. Mm -hmm. I mean, twenty grand's cheap for housing. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. But you need the land to put it on. That's the problem. Yeah. I told TJ that if we cleaned up the pile, my dad would take us to the movies that night. We pretended to help clean up, even though we were just taking what we wanted for the treehouse. We held it away in a wagon, telling TJ that we were taking it to the corner for recycling or something, and that he should keep going. Of course, we didn't go back. No, <laughs> just abandoned him. I don't know why we. I don't know why I thought we'd get away with that. Famously, TJ is someone I'll never see again, <laughs> so he'll never call me out on us lying to him and leaving. Apparently, TJ was there for three more hours before Duke came out and found out what had happened. Oh. I was grounded for the longest that I'd ever been. Good. I cringe and close my eyes, face getting hot at the memory of being forced to apologize to TJ, and for Duke being the adult in the room, apparently. Which is I, like I said, I think he was nice memory. once. Like, I think he was okay yeah. a long time ago. Fucking asshole. I mumble it to myself. We were especially cruel to TJ those couple of years. It was probably because of the age difference. Me and Carl had been ten, TJ was eight. For some reason, two years felt like two decades when you're that old. It is true. Still, there isn't really an, an excuse for how shitty I was to him. Even after all that happened, we never let it. We never let him up into the treehouse. Oh no! I was a real shitty kid. 
But I know TJ doesn't hold it against me. Unfortunately, you're still a shitty adult, Chase, so... Yeah, you really didn't, got bad you didn't news. grow that much. It's good to know that you've just been awful throughout your whole life. It's nice and consistent. <laughs> I, yeah, it is exactly. At least you're consistent. Yeah, it's predictable. Reliable. Still, still, the idea of taking advantage of TJ's trusting nature is just so... terrible. I sigh, giving the rest of the yard a cursory glance, even though I know Carl's not here. I'm a little worried, but I'm sure there's some sort of explanation for where he's gone. I turn back around, deciding to help with the search inside. That's when I see a flash of a fat, orange and gray tail disappearing down the downstairs steps. Garfield? <laughs> <laughs> orange and gray? Fat? Orange and gray tail. Is Jeremy here? Is Janice here? <laughs> I don't think Janice is supposed to be orange because he's she's a coyote. No, but she, I don't know. She's like orangey. I don't know. I blink. Jenna walks past. I'm going to look in the garage. I don't think he's even in the house, though. Okay. As Jenna heads for the garage door, I head for the stairs. The cool air wafting up from the dark hallway ahead of me is marked a marked contrast to the heat from outside. I fan out my shirt a bit as I look at the multiple doors lining the hallway. The only open one is at the end of the hall, though, and I can hear a low voice coming from it. It's Flynn's for sure. Oh, orange and gray and orange fat. And, it's oh, a lizard tail. We just all thought furry. Yeah, I was like, who the fuck? As I pad up to the opening, I can start to make out what he's saying. But I, I just want you to know that I'm not mad at you, okay? Aww. I don't hear a response as I stand just outside the door. From here, all I can see is a few cardboard boxes and a neatly made bed that probably hasn't been touched in years. A guest slash storage room? Where are we? Are we in the attic right now? No, we're in the basement. Oh, down the stairs. It's okay. where like, the was... workout room is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's just, it's just odd that there's like functioning rooms tied to this area shouldn't have sent that like he's a uh... oh he probably did send something come on man i'm trying i was mad yesterday and i, I shouldn't have fucking sent that oh because there, there was a part where tj looked at his phone or something and wouldn't tell us what it was i think yeah he seemed to be lying Lynn's voice comes from further in the room on my left but but why would he are you saying that, that you think TJ has insight onto their, like, spat? No, he's talking to TJ. Oh. TJ's searching in the basement. Oh, oh my god. I thought he was talking to Carl. Okay. No, no, no. I misinterpreted we're still look, this We're entirely. still looking for Carl. I thought maybe no. you found him. Leo sent TJ downstairs, and now Flynn's talking to TJ about what he whatever he sent him on his phone. Okay, Cause yeah. Because I think yesterday TJ was, like very obviously lying to chase about what was on his phone like, yeah no i remember that i just my spatial reasoning is so bad i forgot where everybody was i grit my teeth wavering between going in going in now or just hoping for the best and letting it play out i i, I need to go i was just trying to figure out don't i heard some rustling in the room and that's when i realized that i have to step in I hold onto the door frame as I poke my head in. TJ has backed up against what looks like the do uh, doors to a closet. TJ is cowering in the corner while Flynn has a hand on the lynx's shoulder, grabbing onto the fabric of his shirt. TJ's ears are pinned flat against his head, and he's looking up at Flynn with a grimace. I feel like they should switch these sprites' positions. Yeah, I think so too. Then his eyes flick to mine as he notices me. Let me talk for a sec. No, 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 no. You talk enough. Yeah. You talk and you, you talk wrong. You do? Yes. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. Flynn notices TJ staring over his shoulder, and he jerks his head in my direction. The second he sees me, his hand drops away from TJ's shoulder. We stare at each other for a few seconds, and I swallow loudly. Uh... You guys find Carl? 
My question sounds all the more stupid in the dead silence that follows. Lynn's gaze drifts to the wall over TJ's head, where he stares coldly for a few seconds, his jaw working furiously. I start to worry he's summoning another one of his tantrums. Instead, after about five seconds, he turns on his he's tur bleh, he turns on his heel and stalks out the room. I have to move out of the way as he brushes past me. When I look back into the room, TJ's already moved to stand in front of a mirror on the wall. He straightens out his shirt, then vigorously combs the fur on his face. He does a weird back and forth on the on the cheek on his cheek ruffs with one hand, even though they look fine to me. TJ? Hmm? TJ snaps his head in my direction, one of his ears twitching. Are you okay? I'm okay. He says it fast and loud, giving his shirt one last tug. Uh, let's keep looking for Carl. He makes a point of looking around the room. I, I don't think he's here. This tiny room with no hiding spots. <laughs> oh, 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 wow. <laughs> my, my golly. As he moves past me to leave the room, I grab his arm. He jumps and looks back at me, eyes wide. I quickly let him go, realizing just how closely I'm mimicking what Flynn had done just a minute ago. Do you want to talk? No! I blink in surprise. No, I... I don't want to talk about it. Sorry. His ears are down again, and he's looking at the floor. Let's... Let's just keep looking. He turns away again, and I feel like I should say something more. I want to make him feel better. G get him away from Flynn. Do you want to go for a walk or something? TJ turns back around to stare at me, questioningly. I mean, to keep looking for Carl. He's not in the house, so maybe he's gone out somewhere around town? Aww. TJ nods in understanding, the distressed look melting off his face. Uh, oh, uh, that could be a good idea. Uh, we should tell Leo. I feel a surge of relief at having been able to distract TJ, and now I want to keep that going. Dude, that, that was like, that hurt me. To, yeah, that was, no, no. When, uh, like when I was a kid, I was like discouraged very much from crying. Like that was like a big thing. Like I wasn't supposed to mm -hmm. be crying about stuff, but I cried all the time. I still cry all the fucking time. But 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 there's <laughs> you like You can't stop me. You know, well now I just like <laughs> <laughs> But like but even even now sometimes like there's like a weird guilt tied to being upset or crying because of my childhood. So I like him like touching his fur is like an like analogous to like touching your hair. And even now, like, it's like, it's like, if I'm like trying not to cry, I'll do things that are physical. Like I'll like scrunch my toes or like scratch my leg or something where I'm like trying to like yeah. distract myself from crying. Cause I'm like, I'm not supposed to do that. And so him like doing the weird or the him being like, no, no, it's fine. Like, and I'm looking around like, oh, I'm, I'm looking for Carl. Like that, that's exactly, that's like very similar to how I would react if like in that kind of situation. And so I think what Chase did was actually very perfect where it's like, it's very obvious even to TJ that. Chase knows that TJ is upset, but instead of making TJ acknowledge outwardly that he's upset verbally, you just kind of like, they both know that TJ is upset, but it's like, oh no, I'm going to give you an excuse to do something different. And we're both on the same page that you're upset, but I'm not going to bring it up. Yeah. And that's, that's exactly what you should do. Or that's, that's what I would at least appreciate where it's like, oh, like I... Uh, saw this really funny meme or it's like, oh, I really want to go get ice cream right now. Do you want to go get ice cream with me? It's like, that's perfect. So that was like, that was very touching. I thought that was very good writing. It's also just depressing that like, TJ's just actively used to the people closest to him hurting him and then he just pushes past it and then puts on a smile and well, sometimes you feel dumb for like being upset and it's like, yeah. and it's like you shouldn't have to feel that way but like you're taught to feel that way. So I think and, some of the motions he was doing coming his face was also he's, he's getting rid of the tears. 
Yeah, exactly. Well, mirror, yeah, and he's, he's like he's like touching his face, and you're doing things that are like to try to like comfort yourself. But you're not trying to make it obvious that's what you're doing. So you're trying to like distract the other person and be like, "Oh, I'm I'm looking for Carl. I'm looking for Carl. Ha ha ha! Like, uh-huh. oh, isn't this funny? Like, you know, like I've definitely done stuff like that before. That was like I think that was really good writing. Like I related a lot to that. Luckily, we don't see Flynn on the way out. A distracted and frustrated Leo quickly waves us off as he continues his search uh, in the ground floor bedrooms. Probably got high and passed out somewhere. Leo has such a positive uh, impression of most of his friends. Well, and it's not as if... (laughs) I don't know. Like, Carl just smokes weed. Leave him alone. (laughs) I mean, except for the last playthrough where he was apparently doing hard drugs, which is a little bit sad. But like, there's just a back and forth where just like Flynn is like verbally mean to Carl, but clearly actively supports him all the time in a way. So that he's like he's just being it's he, that over familiar rudeness thing. Well, it's, it kind of has the right in a yeah. weird way because he does like he's so supportive of Carl. He kind of has the right to criticize him because he's actively in his life so much that he has the ability to say that. And nobody's talking about. But Leo and Jenna will both just say really mean things about Carl. Some, and then in Leo's case, it's with the additional background detail of knowing that, like, he just fucked off and didn't contact Carl the whole time we were gone for, like, three years. Like, he just did not care. Like, immediately doesn't care about him until we're back. <laughs> Leo's so, such an asshole. Sorry, like, guys. He's throwing a surprise party for somebody that he doesn't actually care about because he clearly ignored him for years. And because it's, it's clearly like performative for us, and he's just saying the just like, mean things about Carl on the way. It's like, hey, ah. Le- hey, Leo, did you celebrate his last birthday with him? Like, what about the year before that, yeah. or the year before that? Like, when you were both here, you probably just know his birthday because it was on like Facebook or something. Like, yeah. <laughs> he mutters absentmindedly as we head out the door. Muzak. The cicadas. <laughs> it is, I guess those are cicadas, huh? Or something like that. Oh, I saw. Sorry. Chirping I, I insects. Keep going off on tangents, but I saw a really funny <laughs> video of a. There was a, there was a dog, and the dog looks really upset, and the owner comes out, and the, the owner's like, "What's that sound? What's that sound?" She's like, "Open your mouth, open your mouth," and the dog looks really like startled and like doesn't know what to do, but it has a cicada in its mouth that's like buzzing, and the dog's like looks like really kind of guilty but also like it looks like it's like wild eyed where it's like I don't know what to do and, and like, <laughs> like she's, she's like she's like, like you... drop it open your mouth open and as soon as it opens it's like Brrr, and you, you hear the cicada like and she's just like ah, ah she like freaks out and she has to like try to she puts her hands out and like gets the dog to open its mouth the cicada flies out the dog's mouth <laughs> he's just holding it in his mouth because well, I think what happened is he ate the cicada and the cicada started bouncing around and buzzing and the dog like did not know what to do about that <laughs> It just could not put two and two together of how to address that situation. Just the dog's face was so perfect where it was like, I don't know what to do. Something bad's happening. Help me. Yeah. <laughs> I immediately realize what a bad idea it is when I step out into the sun. This is the musky chase route. M- it's just always in the sun. I feel like it's every route. Uh, he was indoors for the entirety of Carl's route. He hasn't been in water yet in this route. No, that's rare. Uh, well, because he, he's always been in water in the river at the beginning, but he usually doesn't get to visit the lake. Uh, he gets to swim of his own free will at the end of Carl's route, but then has a sleep paralysis problem, and everyone freaks out, and it ruins the day. That ruined. Uh, and they did car day. crash into the lake in Leo's route, I guess. Yeah, yeah I don't think that counts. I'm yeah. not counting. Oh, hey, I'm not counting that as a fun water experience. <laughs> TJ, on the other hand, brightens up the second we step out of the mansion. That, at least, makes me feel a little bit better. We walk in silence for the first few minutes, looking at the rolling hills and mountains, cactus and sagebrush. It's one of those days where I'm not sure if the heat is worse coming from the sun above me or the baking black asphalt under my feet. And you guys don't wear shoes. Oh man, that's horrible. You should not be walking on the road. (laughs) You should definitely be in the dirt. Dude, I pick up my dog and carry her across yeah. the street. I, we went to the park once and it got hot while we were at the park. And I was like, oh no. And I carried her like the whole way home. Because I was like, oh no. And mm-hmm. then I had to put her down during the shady parts because she's too heavy. Because you're so big. She's like 45 pounds. It's, it's a lot to walk like a mile home. You can with. hear her use the stairs. Yeah, cool, cool. Well, she's really <laughs> come, enthusiastic come, 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 about come, come. it. <laughs> How's school going for you? 
I blink out of my burning alive trance and try to focus on the question. Oh. Uh, it's okay. Just kind of tedious, you know? At the same time, I get a pang of panic, realizing how much work I still needed still needed to be done on my project. Don't worry, Chase. No one believes in you. <laughs> yeah, what project? I'm able to convince myself that I still have half the week. I'll <laughs> figure something out. Sure, buddy. Sure you will. If he ever wanted to get this project done, turning it into like a, a group event was the worst thing he could have possibly done, because... It's impossible. If you make, if you ever make plans about getting something done, while also hanging out with other people, that's like it's an incompatible concept. It never happens. Especially people you haven't seen in so long. There's like a lot of catching up to do. Yeah. Like it's not. Gonna, it's not like you can tell your friend to like fuck off because you see them every other day. It's like no, you need to like talk to them because they really want to hang out with you. But it was all Jenna's idea again, and he just does whatever Jenna says. Well, I mean. Chase has a lot of problems. <laughs> he has a lot of things he needs to fix about his life. What about you? It's great. Athletic training, right? Yep. So what exactly do you do? do, you do? Uh, train people for sports? PJ laughs. Well, it's more to do with injuries. Recognizing them, preventing them, treating them if I can. I didn't know that's what you do. So you're like a, a doctor or something? He laughs again. But like always, he's just able to do it in a way that you know he's not laughing at you. <laughs> oh, uh, definitely not. That would be really hard. I, I guess you could say I'm an athletic trainer in a healthcare... I guess you could say... athletic. Bleh. I guess you could say that an athletic trainer is a healthcare professional. Cool. Cool. I <laughs> thought you don't care at all anymore. Like, oh, cool, cool. Yeah, so whatever. I'm paying attention. Eh. I just try to keep from panting. I thought, I thought you would have been more into like coaching or something. You like sports. DJ shakes his head. No, I I'd be terrible at that. I can't yell at people all day. Is there even a degree for coaching? I think there is, or something like that. I think that most people that want to coach just get a teaching degree in history so they can <laughs> teach. Damn. I make air quotes. <laughs> wow. Way to diss people that get history degrees. At a, at a high school while also coaching. They teach to coach. Oh yeah, that's how it was at our school. They have programs for you to be able to be a sports coach or something. I like I've seen those programs at the colleges I've been to. I don't know what it's called. I don't know how to phrase it. But there is a, like a type of degree for that. And especially like what he does and also like a sports nutritionalist and like those sorts of things. I mean, I think he's just dissing history teachers for not being serious about actually oh, teaching yeah. their own subject. I mean, well, coach is one of the most dunked on things you can be in a school. Ha, <laughs> dunked on. Uh, <laughs> But it's a, it's like that, that, that mean, that mean phrase people repeat all the time. Like those that don't do teach and those that can't teach coach. <laughs> it's just like brutal. It's funny because I was going to say something like, oh, the, the janitors. But honestly, every janitor I've ever had has been beloved by like every kid. It's like, oh yeah, like we had like Manuel was our, was our janitor. We, like we yeah. loved him. He got like, he got like chocolates for Valentine's Day and presents for Christmas. Like everyone liked Manuel. He was awesome. Yeah, they usually get the, they the usually coaches. get along with the kids, and they're simultaneously cleaning and like the handyman for like the entire campus. Yeah, they fix stuff. Yeah, they're, like if some kid throws up, they're like, "It's okay, bud. I'm gonna get the sawdust out." Like they're like a hero in a weird way. Like it'll be okay. Go to the nurse's office. Like I got this for you. I step on a particularly sharp rock and bite my lip to keep from yelping. I really just wanted to do something involving athletics. Do you like it? The whole athletic training thing? Uh, yeah! Well, it is my first year, so who knows, but I think I do. Oh yeah, because it's two years younger. Yep. So you just like helping people? That, and I just like sports. TJ is quiet for a second. It probably sounds silly, but I seem to make life... It seems to make life seem more simple? Sports? Yeah. Or exercising uh, there's a goal and something in your way like the other team or a big hill 
TJ kicks a pebble up from the ground and catches it on the top of his foot before launching it down the road. Damn. damn. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking God that impressive. Damn. The type of shit you can pull off when you're barefoot, apparently. <laughs> but And also a cat. Yeah. And your only job is to get around that and get to your goal. The lynx laughs. I don't know if that makes any sense. I think it does. I'm kind of like that with the vi with video games, I guess. Try to get paid for that, though. Keith. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <imagine>. Keith. <laughs> I can see that. I try to kick a pebble up onto the top of my foot like TJ did, but I end up just kicking it off to the side of the road. How did you do that? Oh, I just got lucky that time. Usually it doesn't work. I am on the soccer team, though. I think about how I didn't even bothered trying out for my school's swim team for otters. I already knew how mediocre I was. But I also just like being on the side of the field with all the cheering and lights. It's fun. As we continued down the, ro the road, we walked past the charred foundations of an old trailer. While the brush has mostly grown back, scorched earth and black sagebrush skeletons still remain. At that moment, my phone goes off, and I pull it out, having to cut my hand over the top so I can see the screen under the bright sun. It's a text from Leo. Found him. Hey, they found Carl. Dead in a ditch. Oh, where? He didn't say, just that they found him. It's kind of ominous. Well, well that's great. Yeah. I smile a little, as a little ball of tension in my chest that I didn't even know was there dis dissipates. Great. Where was he? Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of... Mm. It might just be the same as, as Leo's route. He was just like passed out, covered in drywall in the, ba in the basement <laughs> in a weird crawl space. Oh, such a weird, <laughs> a weird place to be. We, we gotta remember that it's like, his house is so absurd that there's the basement and then there's the crawl space. Like there's even more. There's the double basement, the advanced basement. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. It doesn't matter to me how rich I'd be. I can't. That's that's too much work. It's a lot of commitment to have a house that big. Mm -hmm. I don't like cleaning the amount of space I have, and that's not very much at all. No. I look back over my shoulder at the mansion resting at the base of the mountains, the distance and heat making it hazy. I really don't want to walk all the way back. Maybe he just took a walk like us and got back? Maybe. My phone buzzes in my hand as I get another response from Leo. No party. Carl isn't feeling good. I frown. He ate too much drywall. <laughs> what? Said Carl's Carl isn't feeling so uh Carl isn't feeling good, so there's not gonna be a party? Oh. Don't get that face from from uh, TJ that much. The kind of dead eye expression. The, I, I mean, I feel like they use that one, kind of incorrectly sometimes. Like this to me looks like a sarcastic, like "oh yeah, sure" kind of face. But I don't think he usually means it that way. I think it might be intended as a neutral expression, but it doesn't quite work. It's a little too. There's a little too much to read into it. It's just because his eyebrows, like the one is kind of cocked and the other one's kind of down. Yeah, it, I think that's really what makes it like that. It's for truly me. the modern Mona Lisa. <laughs> Like, oh, looking into my soul, what does that expression mean? Is that a, <laughs> what is the smile for? TJ looks back at the mansion with me, airing out his shirt with both hands while he does. As much as it sucked for me to be under the sun, it's always worse for TJ with that thick fur. I copy him, airing out my own shirt, starting to feel self-conscious again about my musk. Should we head back? I hope he's okay. I think about all the shitty tension going back, uh, going on back there in Grimace. I don't know. We could do something else. This is, this is what Chase loves to do. Just n not at all do the things he's supposed to do in every route. Just kind of veer off well, into some. He's kind of got like a defining character trait, uh, which, to be fair, in this case, it's being used by the writer to direct them towards probably the diner to do the Janus stuff and it'd be to explain narratively why they're not going to just go back to the group but it's also informed by Chase's consistent like, characterization uh, which is that like whenever there's kind of like a drama thing going on he tries to just 
not go there or not deal with those people. And like, so whenever there's like he's there's an unresolved thing, he just leaves, which also yeah. speaks back to like him and the, Leo, like the phone short, and then him just fucking off to to college. Yeah, and 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 basically him not telling Leo that like that they're like broken up or whatever and having like leaving him like hanging for so long and having some yeah. weird like like basically not confronting his problems it, i think is chase's yeah one like, of his like defining was, character traits which is not a good one because he was already he was seemingly already planning on breaking up with leo but just not doing it and then even after he left he still strings things along and doesn't just control himself there he's not great he's kind of wishy-washy i guess i don't know we could do something else dj appears to think his hands on his hips. Then his face lights up. Hey! Janice's house is right <laughs> down the road. We can get a head start on the work. Oh. Yeah, Chase is regretting <laughs> all that. He's like, oh. I, have to, I thought I was leaving a bad situation, but now I have to do manual labor. Chase is not clued into narrative foreshadowing at all. He had no idea what, what the consequences of this were going to be. And also, he's a bad person. So. <laughs> I'd almost forgotten about that. Well, I definitely planned to go. I didn't want to now, under this heat. TJ jumps in place, like he's warming up for a game. It'll feel good to do something after sitting around all day. To, 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 if only to have that energy in Ugh. life. How, how do you become a TJ? It's like when you look at a child and you're like, Oh, that energy. Yeah. I wish I had that ability. <laughs> all I have is neck pain. <laughs> all I have is nihilism. <laughs> I stare at TJ, absolutely baffled by his enthusiasm. What? I mean, well, first of all, it's work. Second, aren't you worried about how she's going to be when we get there? I stare down the road at the approximate spot where we'd just seen her an hour ago. It's, just, it's only been an hour? Because well, all that's happened is the not birthday party. I know, but like, I don't know. I'd leave. Yeah. Oh, man, that seems too soon. She's not there now, obviously, but the memory still sends chills up my spine. Well, I want to make sure that she's okay, too. I don't know. We we should give her at least a few hours to recover. TJ stops bouncing and rubs his arm. Sorry, um, if you don't want to go, I, I, I can just go. I glare at him. Oh, don't guilt me. I'm not. I'm just... I don't want you to... I don't want you to be mad at me. I stretch, feeling sweat trickling down the sides of my face. We could wait until evening, at least. Uh... Yeah, I, I guess we could do that. The disappointment on TJ's face is so obvious, there's no way he's not doing it on purpose. Okay, so what if she opens the door and she's still got her pants down? That would be confusing. <laughs> she, she, like, waddles up to the door yeah, and like, opens she, it, and she's she, like... What, did she waddle home without take, pulling her pants up? That'd be really inconvenient. TJ blanches. Chase! I'm just saying, that's what could happen. There's no telling what she's on. Janice isn't like that. So maybe she was just having some sort of episode. Everyone's crazy here. All the more reason to check on her. Sometimes you just want to pee outside. Yeah, okay? it's fun. <laughs> yeah, it is fun. <laughs> it is fun. I rub my face. Come on. It's fine. I can just go. TJ folds his arm and leans in closer. Or maybe, you know... She just had to pee. Like I said, the, the problem was her response and her lack of acknowledgement that, they, yeah. that we were there. That is the only problem. I don't... She's peeing outside. Whatever. You gotta do what you gotta do. I get it. She didn't acknowledge us. That's the problem. She's being weird. <laughs> she smiled at us while peeing, which is very weird. Very he, weird. He whispers the last few words like the, the worst cuss words in the world. Or maybe, you know... She just had to pee. Oh no, don't <laughs> say that out loud. Oh my goodness. I snort and close my eyes. F fine. I wipe the back of my hand across my forehead. But if we have a heat stroke, it's all on you. Or if I have a heat stroke. Oh gosh, don't say that. If you feel dizzy or sick, you're going inside. The thought of sitting inside with Janice while I cool down is almost as unbearable as the thought of manual labor. 
Still, TJ looks happy, which is worth it, I guess. Oh. I guess. Ugh. 